impact assessment. So for the intro, data collection and analysis is essential and uh, for developing appropriate responses. So accurate and up-to-date data can assist to assess the scale and trend <clears throat> within, within to establish a basic uh, profile. So quality and, uh, and value of any data collection exercise is enhanced by clearly establishing the following elements in advance. The first thing is the purpose, the scope, and methodology of the data collection exercise is important and uh, followed by the relevance that is the whole variation indicators so indicators can be age it can be gender it can be the country of origin it can also be the population of the host community so data collection too can be in the form of questionnaires it can also be participatory assessment and uh, also parameters for data collection and sharing, such as uh, the inclusion of safety to preserve privacy, confidentiality, security of uh, personal information in accordance with the data collection standard. Or if, for instance, uh, the person providing the information is not willing to disclose the issue at own age. <clears throat> you can present the data for the age in range. So before we go into this, uh, the social and then the data collecting aspects of this study, first I want us to have a brief uh, history of environmental social impact assessment. So it is important for us to know that the ESIA emerged internationally after the 1972 Shokong Conference and it's now recognized internationally in the Rio Principle and the 1991 Expo Convention. So my next slide is going to show us uh, the outcome of this uh, conference and then uh, the definition that was given to the ESIA as a whole. So for the Rio Convention, the, the Principle 17 states that the environmental impact assessment as it, it, it states, environmental impact assessment is a national instrument. As a national instrument, shall be undertaken for purpose, uh, proposed activities that are likely to have significant adverse impact on the environment and are subject to a decision of a, of a competent national authority. So for the Expo diminution, it's uh, defined the ESIA as uh, a national uh, procedure for the evaluation of the likely impact of the proposed activity in the environment. So for further introduction, the ESIA are carried out in a wide variety, variety of sectors, and this includes agriculture, manufacturing, tourism, mining, forestry. So the project requires, projects requires an ESIE can be large. So sometimes the project can be very large, such as, such as a hydroelectric project, and it can be as small as maybe a new hotel on the beach. So however, the level of impact on human and environmental health so the thing is, is centered on the level of impact rather than the size of the project. So it's important, it's important, it's an important aspect of uh, ESIA in decision making. All right, so to further attempt a clearer definition of uh, the ESIA, the ESIA is a systematic process that number one, identify, Number two, predict, and number three, evaluate the environmental effects of proposed actions and projects. So the environmental aspect of it can further be interpreted as the physical environment, the biological environment, and of course, the social environment. 
So AIA, as it stands, is very good in decision making. So it's a decision making tool so that helps to predict the effects of the proposed activity on the project area. And it also helps to compare various alternatives for a project to identify the best combination of uh, economic, environmental, and social costs and benefits. So all of all this are uh, just a, a way of uh, trying to introduce the ESI into us. And now let's go back to the main purpose of uh, this training, this very moment. Now let us look at uh, the type of data that are available. We have the types of data available. We have the primary data, the secondary data, qualitative and uh, quantitative data. So these data would assist to ensure that accurate and comprehensive information is obtained about a particular situation. However, in order for data to properly inform policy development, it requires processing and analysis. So that is, data does not just end with a collection, it goes further as far as you processing the data and also analyzing the data. So for the primary data, the primary data are data that you collect directly from individuals for a specific purpose by the use of methods such as uh, interview. So it can be a key informant interview or questionnaires that you share to the very the individual that you are interrogating at that point in time. So where possible, allow for a more in-depth and comprehensive analysis. So primary data can be collected at point of departure. Uh, for instance, you visit a project area, you visit the host community. You can collect the data at the point of arrival. And also you, you can also collect the data even while you are departing from within the community. So if the opportunity availed itself. So that is for primary. So now let us look at uh, the secondary data. So when we're talking about the uh, secondary data, it is compiled, is data compiled from existing information sources, which may have been collected for other purposes. And sometimes it can be data that you obtain online. They are already existing and may also be available and ready for the very analysis that uh, you are working on at that point in time. And uh, the third, third one, we're looking at uh, qualitative data. Qualitative data. So what we mean when we say qualitative data is data that is non-measurable. It captures feelings. It captures uh, personal experience. It captures uh, attitude and intention. So sometimes you need, to, you need to get the perception of uh, people within a community. So this uh, qualitative data will go a long way to solve that very uh, challenge. To solve that very challenge, and it can also be useful in understanding cultural context or establishing baseline information. That's very important. Then, by contrast, now we are looking at finally quantitative data. Now, remember, I said earlier, quantitative data is non-measurable. Or well, as for quantitative data. It is numeric. It's something that can be measured. So it, uh, quantitative data allows for an objective assessment of a situation in order to compare one situation with another and to track conditions within the same situation over time. So it provides, it is it is produced by observed and measuring things that can be counted and calculated. Uh, remember I talked about uh, you know collecting data for population of people within the host community. So those one falls under this uh, quantitative uh, data collection method approach method. So the collection of both qualitative and quantitative data can be helpful to understand the goal Purpose, the goal and purpose of data, uh, data gathering. So now, what about this uh, the data management? 
It's not all about going to a few. It's not all about visiting the host communities to collect data. There is need for you to have a very good way of managing your data. And uh, how are you going to arrive at that? So first, it is important for us to know that uh, good data management includes developing effective processes for, number one, consistently collecting and recording data. So that means you have a consistent approach for each of the questions you have within the questionnaire, they are consistent or true, and they are not at any point altered or changed into something else. And then also you should have, a, okay, also for storing data securely. So when you store your data securely also, it's also a good way of managing data. Cleaning data also, and then also transparent data. I think in the subsequent slide, we're going to look at what it means to have cleaning uh, data. So between different, between different types of software used for analysis, so effectively different data and uh, effectively presenting different data and making data accessible for verification and used by others. So these are some of the approaches that you need to adopt to have uh, a good data management. So commonly referred to aspects of data quality are validity. So if I want to say that uh, a data is good, a data is good, you are going to look at the validity of the data. So when we're talking about validity of the data, what, the, what are we talking about? Data measures what the, they are intended to measure. You have a data and uh, the purpose of collecting the data is to collect, uh, you know, to get the number of persons that are within the age of 10 to 20 female. And at the end of the day, after collecting this data, you it was ensured that uh, you, you were just so specific on what was required. So the reliability of the data. Data are measured and collected consistently according to standard definition and methodology. So standard definition and methodology should be used. And that is what will make a data reliable. So if you're collecting data for ESIA, you need to follow the standard definitions. You need to follow the standard methodology for collection of this data. And as such, your results will be reliable. So completeness also. Completeness entails that all data elements are included as per definition and methodology specified. Mm -hmm. Precision, data, data having sufficient detail, that is precision. The integrity of the data, data are protected from you know, deliberate bias or manipulation, either for personal reason or probably for political reason. The timeliness of the data is also very important. Data are up to date, current, and information is available on time. So what are some of the ways, approaches that we can still adopt in having a, you know, a good data? It is advised to use standardized data collection tools. That is what is obtainable concerning this very data that I want to collect. So which have already been tried and tested in real life situation. They have been tried, tested, and they've been seen to be trustworthy. So you can also improve on this if necessary. So where adapt adaptation to local context are necessary or when data collection to needed to be developed, it is important to conduct a pilot test first and improve on the tool before using it generally. So if you have a, a data collecting device that uh, has not been tested before, there is need for you to run a kind of a pilot test to see if uh, the data that is going to be obtained from that device or that software will be reliable. So use experienced data collectors. That is people that are very experienced in that field. Provide training for data collectors on a specific task. Ensure it is specific. So if you are going to delegate uh, the collectors to different areas, ensure that they have specific tasks and then they are trained on that task and the particular tools that they will use. 
So supervising data collection across multiple data, across multiple data collector can also help to reduce bias. So remember, all of all, what we're trying to do is how we can reduce bias as much as possible. So even when data have been collected using well-defined procedures and the standardized tools, they need to be checked for any inaccurate or missing data. And this is known as data cleaning. So that is, as soon as you finish collecting your data, you still need to go through all of this data to do some check to see if you have any parts of the data that is not proper, uh, probably uh, properly built or that is missing. So that is what they call data cleaning. So data cleaning will help to deal with such kind of error. And the such errors can occur from probably the time the data is, the time you're recording the data, or maybe from reading, storage, transmission, or processing of computerized data. And ensure that data quality also extends to ensuring appropriate data analysis and presentation of the data in the evaluation reports so that the findings are clear and conclusion can be substantiated. This often also involves making the data accessible so that they can be verified by other persons and or used for additional purposes, such as for synthesizing results from different evaluation. So specific issues in ensuring data quality in data analysis. The number one, as with data collection, ensuring quality in data analysis is a good is a, is a part of good data management. A few particularly pertinent issues are touched upon in more details within this within the, the section. Now, each data source has its strengths and limitations, which should be explicitly described. Then, for the reasons for this reason, purposefully integrated different data collection method or triangulating different data source to answer the key evaluation questions will overcome the weakness inherent in each data source when used alone. So a missed method approach also improves the credibility of the findings when information from different data source combines. So that is, they are consistent about the direction and the findings and can deepen the understanding of a program and policy, its effects and its context. Okay, so let's move, let's see the value of missed of missing methods. So for the value of missing the methods, number one, we have an enriching enrichment of the data. There is need for you also to examine the data. And there is also need for you to see that the data can explain itself. Also triangulating the data that is confirming or rejecting what has been presented. So analyzing data in order to summarize them and look for patterns is an important part of every evaluation. So if you are to analyze your data, you have to ensure that all of these steps are followed. So how, how the data will be synthesized should be decided at the evaluation design stage, appropriate to the type of key evaluation question and described fully in the evaluation plan. So challenges. Common challenges in data collection and analysis can relate to poor choice of methodology as well as poor implementation method. For example, I provided below. I'm choosing the same old method regardless of the accessibility to the specific evaluation. So that is a challenge. Choosing the same old method regardless of the accessibility. So that means if you're using a method before now and you discovered along the line <coughs> that this method can be worked up to improve it, you can decide to improve it. 
So the second challenge is uh, choosing methods that are not specifically related to answering the key evaluation questions. So constructing, that is, constructing an evaluation matrix can help to make such, to make such that all of the key evaluation questions are covered. So you have to ensure that the key questions that you need are covered within the, you know, the questionnaire, the key of the questionnaire. So choosing just one method to answer a key evaluation question is also a challenge. You can decide to adopt many methods. Then poor implementation of methods. That's the continuation of the challenges we have. Poor implementation of methods. This includes poor execution of sampling. Poor execution of sampling. So if the approach you're using for sampling is not adequate, is not correct. So these are some of the challenges we have with uh, you know data collection. For example, using a convenient sample or having a systematically low response rate without systematically checking and making transparent how the respondent may have been different from the non-respondents. So a key concern in sampling is ensuring that the data, the data from the sample can be appropriately generalized, either statistically or analytically. Uh, significant underrepresentation in the selected sample may lead to poor or incorrect conclusion about the program or policy under investigation. So another challenge can be in the form of a poor data collection. Poor data collection, and this can be a fallout of probably working with a, a poor translator on site. You're going to a community that you're not familiar with uh, their language, and then the translator that is working with you does not really know, understand the language very well. So it will also uh, it will contribute to the poor quality of your data collection. Then the poor quality of uh, data analysis as well is also some of these challenges. And then, uh, okay. Poor quality reporting and presentation. Poor quality reporting and presentation. All of this can be cloudy data, and at the end of the day, you don't have a, a good data to present. Uh, finally, conclusion. There are several advantages to having a data collection monitoring and evaluation system as an integral element of project design. The feasibility of data collection and monitoring evaluation can be used as a key criterion for acceptable design. So I think at this point, uh, I will want to leave it open to the viewers. If you have uh, any question, you can be free to think of your question. Thank you. Question and answer. Send me. All right. So I think uh, we've come to the end of the training for today. So I, in the absence of uh, any question, we can decide to wrap it up at this time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.